People bring me all sorts of strange things to, uh, to repair and today's challenge is looking at this little Silvercrest uh, sort of mini vacuum thing. It doesn't charge the battery. The red light should turn green and this has been plugged in for several hours now and, uh, and no change. So we need to check out uh, what's going on. I guess the place to start will be with the little charging adapter itself, which is labeled as 5.5 volts. We're looking at 5.27, 5.3, so it's a, a tad low, but that shouldn't really make any difference. Um, I guess that there's only probably a single lithium iron cell in here at 3.7 volts. So let's take a look inside and see what's going on. Having removed all the screws, we can now try and get inside the guide to take a look. Just remove this switch. Okay, that's, that's neat. So what do we have here? Quite a simple brushed motor arrangement, a little in, impeller, uh, some jiggery pokery here, speed control no doubt, and a charging circuit, and as predicted uh, a single lithium ion cell. Now the wires from that, uh, where are they going, appear to be to this connector here. Indeed, it does say, I don't know if we can see that uh, battery minus and plus. So let's pull that connector a moment. Okay. So with that removed, we can now check the cell voltage. And we can see that the cell is only measuring 1.5 volts. So the issue appears to be that the, uh, the lithium ion cell is dead. So we're going to need to find a replacement for that, which will be no problem as I often uh, take apart uh, lithium packs and salvage the cells out of them. So let me go and find one that's suitable and uh, we'll get that fitted and see if that solves our issue. In my pack rat stores, I've found this Panasonic um, 18650 and this is measuring some 4.146 so that's quite healthy and uh, Panasonic make I uh, have some confidence in unlike whatever this is and uh, as I just took the sleeve off the uh, negative contact literally just fell off so uh, not a terribly good um, endorsement for the soldering there and this is labeled 1300 milliamps and 18650 i wonder if there's any other markings on the cell itself unbranded to put it politely so we're going to need to get these off and solder them onto the new cell now i've prepared this um, with a dremel just um roughened up the surface there to make it easier to solder to and uh, I'll be using a little bit of uh, this this flux as well uh, belt and braces uh, every little helps as they say Let's pop it back into the to the vac there Hook it up to the board. That wasn't supposed to happen. This particular version of the vacuum cleaner is designed to work as a window washer cleaner thing. Hence, uh, operating in a damp environment, but I think this one has gotten more than damp. Uh, my attention was drawn to the rust on the, on the motor, and I thought we'd look at the circuit board itself. 
you can see a degree of corrosion on the top there even though this has been coated in some sort of what looks like polyurethane but when we turn our attention to the back of the board it is heavily corroded and in fact there are uh, some of the they're not exactly the traces but the uh, the enamel uh, is coming off as well so we'll need to get that cleaned up and take a closer look and perhaps the reason why it won't switch off um, we'll have to look at these connections here and see if they're corroded too using the microscope we can inspect the board more closely uh, here we see the negative wire from the motor that negative side is being switched by this FET and the FET is being controlled by this transistor down here. Now where the positive lead for the motor used to go the whole area around it has corroded away so it's difficult to see but this material here is actually just the circuit board. The copper ends there and uh, there is a plated through hole and the solder on the other side of that so it was just connecting the wire but the, the rest of it uh, is completely missing. Effect of that was that this lead here was not getting the battery voltage so it was kind of just floating. So what I've done is to clear off a piece of the copper trace here and bridge across and also soldered the positive lead of the motor onto this part here. So now we're in a position to go back and, and test and see if that has, uh, has resolved the issue. With the button reconnected, so we appear to be in reasonable shape. So now with the button, uh, we have control of the motor once again, so that's good news. All that remains is to see whether the charging side bit works. Let's take a look at that. So we have here the adapter. Plug that in. And the LED is coming on to indicate that it's charging. Let's just take a quick look across the cell with our meter. So across the cell with the charger connected we can see 4.189 and climbing which would seem to indicate that it is indeed charging. If we remove the charging lead, our voltage drops back down. So let's just plug that in and leave it for a moment, or a few minutes, and uh, see if we get the charge complete. Come on. Now the LED has turned green, indicating the charge condition. So let's just check what the cell voltage is. And that's fine, 4.209. So the charge circuit uh, is is working. Can remove the charger now. So all is good. Now clearly the varnish or whatever they use to coat the board uh, <laughs> didn't work terribly well. So I'm going to find an alternative solution, quite literally, and uh, we'll see how that looks. My choice for protecting circuit boards in this in type of environment, whether it's humid or, or, or damp, is this Plasti Dip. And you can find distributors for this product in, uh, in most geographies, and I find it works extremely well. So I'm coated both sides of the board with that. We'll get it reassembled and back off to its owner. And I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll like and subscribe.